our mailing, uh, these are informal, arbitrary rules were uh, not necessarily followed, but we do have a format and we want to conduct this as concerned citizens from the city of Waverly and we'll conduct themselves in that manner. Uh, the format, <coughs> relatively straightforward. The first the speakers will be the petitioners. They will have 30 minutes to present their side of the uh, issue. <coughs> Followed by that, the city will have 30 minutes to present their side and rebut. Uh, next, the petitioners again have 15 minutes in order to uh, uh, rebut the statements of the city. And then at the conclusion of those, the opening statements and the rebuttals, then we will go to the audience and ask for any questions uh, or comments from the audience for 15 minutes. And then finally, we will have questions for the 15 minutes that follows. Uh, and we'll wrap up with a five minute presentation from each of the petitioners and then for the city. All right. Let me read a couple of things of statute. The burden of proof, Iowa Code states that at all hearings, the burden shall be upon the objectors with reference to any proposed item in the budget which was included in the budget of the previous year and which the objectors propose should be reduced or excluded. The code also continues that the burden of proof shall be upon the certifying board, in this case that would be the city, uh, as the case may be, to show that any new item in the budget or any increase in any of the items in the budget is necessary reasonable in the interest of public welfare. All right, I think we can get started with the spokesperson for the petitioner. If you would give us your name, you could either stand at the mic or step wherever you're comfortable. I do have some mics around the room, so I think we should be able to pick you up no where you are located. And I'll turn it over to you for 30 minutes. Uh, good morning, my name is Diane Turnbull, and I'm going to be presenting for petitioners. Uh, the first item of business, I think, would be to ask that you formally accept our uh, exhibits one through nine that we delivered to you uh, by mail so that they become part of the public public record uh, officially. Okay. Um, to discuss the budget and our concerns, one has to look not just at the line items that are in the budget, but look at the economic conditions and the status of the city of Waverly uh, as a backdrop for financial decisions. As you, your departments are all aware, because you're state departments and you've had to deal with the budgets at the state level and the cuts that are being demanded by the governor and the legislature, the economic condition in this country is not one of the best at the moment. This is not the days and times when we can have all the luxuries that we want. And this, this uh, condition has impacted and, and is alive and present in Waverly also. I refer you to Exhibit 5 in our um, um, submittal, where we have a collection of, of articles that talk about the economic conditions in Waverly, the layoffs of businesses, Terex, GMT, and, and the impact that that will have on the citizens here in town. Also, there's an article in there that uh, talks about the cuts at the Waverly Health Center, the city-owned hospital made in their budget for the coming year based on the financial conditions they found themselves in. And as you'll see in there, they are eliminating all open position, positions. They cut back by 4% the uh, senior management uh, salaries. They uh, eliminated all raises for 2009. They eliminated the manager's incentive program that they had, as well as closing their health promotion uh, promotion center and the, and the pool. There are three main issues that we see that are facing Waverly as it fa uh, enters the next budget cycle. One was the impact of the floods on two of our local schools, uh, the elementary school and the junior high school. One is the fact that for years now, the city of Waverly has suffered through a series of floods either caused by the river a uh, local creek called a dry run creek or combination of the two. So flood mitigation needs to occur. And we have many, many home homeowners and businesses that still haven't recovered from the flood, aren't back in their homes, 
don't know where the money's going to come to be back in their homes and businesses that are still not functioning at the level they were prior to. As a matter of fact, at over 700, over 700 homes and 140 businesses were impacted by the floods of last summer. As you can see from material that we included in Exhibit 6 of our submittal, there have now become some costs that the city has established through work with Stanley Engineering that demonstrate what flood mitigations, or at least some of the flood mitigations, cost will be for the city. In there, you'll see that the council has decided to move forward with a project to replace the dam that's just outside the window here with an inflatable dam that can be lowered at flood time to have water go through um, more quickly and hopefully prevent flooding in parts of town. The uh, tab for that particular project is uh, about four and a quarter million dollars. Stanley also did some work to see what improvements would be needed on the dry run, which is the other element that helps with the flooding here in town. And the costs for that established by Stanley were just slightly over six million dollars. So for just those two projects, which doesn't include all of the flood mitigation necessary to help with the flooding issues in this town, you have a $10 million tab that is facing the city here to come up with the money to um, uh, solve those problems. Now the city has applied for two grants for the inflatable dam, one to the CDBG funds. That grant for slightly over a million dollars has been uh, granted and approved by the CDBG. And then they, the remainder of the costs of the inflatable dam, they have applied for an EDA uh, grant for the remainder. That application hasn't yet been um, resolved. Uh, the issue of what to do about the two schools uh, was in fact uh, resolved in a manner this last Tuesday, and I apologize for not having this exhibit in our packet, but we had to have these submittals to you prior to. Um, the Tuesday's date, there was a local referendum for $18,900,000 bond issue to pay for um, building two new school. Well, it'll be a combined school, but it'll be a school that uh, takes care of replacing the elementary school and the junior high. The citizens of this town, through the election process, decided that they were ready, willing to assume the burden of solving that necessary issue. And, and that extreme need here in the community by taxing themselves for doing that. The consequence of that, however, is that all the taxpayers in this town, there will be $151 per $100,000 $100, assessed valuation that will be a new tax that will be added to the existing taxes that people pay. Now, despite all the bad economic indicators and the tremendous amount of future costs that the city is facing, there seems to be in this budget, in our opinion, a policy of continued spending and of overstating the revenues. And I'd like to direct your attention to page 50 of our exhibit number two. Um, and on that page, we're showing the projections of what, um, whoops, I don't know if I can figure out the height back here. And maybe I can't. Um, what the, the city is projecting will be their revenues, not in this year's budget, but in next year's budget. And in that, they're showing $3,593,000 and some change in projected revenues, which is $169,000 more than their estimate as to what the property tax revenues will be for the budget we're, we're subject to this hearing. Yet in conversations with the Bremer County Assessor's Office, who just uh, two days ago sent out the reassessment in bills, and I'm assuming some people may have gotten theirs yesterday. If not, they'll probably get it today.